Hi everyone. Um, I'm making this very impromptu video for a few reasons. The first reason is because if you've been following what's been happening lately in the flat earth, you'll know that probably the biggest topic that's been being talked about and even dividing people is the map because everybody knows that there's problems with the map. Um, in fact, if you, if you're watching, say, uh, Lori Freire's channel, Flat Earth Conspiracy, you'll see that her and Lawrence, Lawrence Wright, have devoted the last few shows, the last three shows to perusing this, this map problem, because there, there are serious problems with the map. Um, now, since about a month or so ago, I've been commenting on certain people's videos, trying to encourage them to look into what we know of concerning directions and what we understand about directions from the Bible. Um, whether or not you're a flat earther and question the Bible or maybe just don't believe the Bible, uh, any way you look at it, the Bible is the most accurate historical and geographical document we have. Um, this has been verified again and again by honest archaeologists and historians. So I think that it's only wise and prudent for us to use the Bible to try to figure out what's going on with the map and I've been noticing <clears throat> excuse me I've been noticing a lot of problems as I've been looking at the Bible and reading virtually all of the modern English translations that we have and I I just want to go over the, some of these things with you um what we're used to seeing as a map, when we think of the world as something like this, um, this is the Gall Peters projection map, and we would look at this map and and we would just we would naturally think, okay, the north is this way, and then the south is this way, east is this way, and west is this way. And the problem I have with that, if we'll go to more of a, this is a map of the Mideast, okay? And this map is laid out per what we think of as north, south, east, and west as directions. Now, this is the problem I started running into quite some time ago. We go to Genesis chapter 11, and we start at verse 1, and it says, The whole earth was of one language and one speech. It happened as they traveled east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they lived there okay now the the problem with that is if you go two chapters back you will see that it says actually sorry we'll go three chapters back Okay, we see the ark, uh, the ark rests on Ararat. So, we see that the ship rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month on Ararat's mountains. Okay, that is not Mount Ararat as we know it today in Turkey. That is the Ararat Mountains. I'll go back to the Mideast map. The Ararat Mountains stretch from this region of Turkey into Iran. They are very big, okay? So we've had more modern explorers and actually even some from a few centuries ago that we don't hear a lot about who went looking for that ark. And many, many explorers and Bible scholars, they believe that the ark actually came to rest here the mountains of Ararat. This is still the mountains of Ararat. It's just not Mount Ararat here. 
It's the mountains of Ararat. Now here's the problem. Shinar. Shinar is right down in here. And in fact, the historical Babylon is right here. So you've got the mountains of Ararat, the spot when where, where most good historians have pinpointed the ark's landing to be. And then you have this here. That is direct, quote unquote, south from where they were supposedly landed. Now, even if they landed on what we call Mount Ararat in this area, it's still southward. It's still southward with, with the slightest bearing eastward as we understand directions. So that's a problem because, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're like me, then you believe that the Bible is inerrant. So there's no way they're here, which this is where all of civilization started from after the flood. They, they landed in the mountains of Ararat, they, they multiplied from here, and then they traveled to Shinar here. It just that doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. So we're going to fast forward a little bit now up to a very key chapter. Okay. And this is Genesis 13. And it reads, and I am going to have to start in verse one, and I'm going to have to read a, a pretty good deal of this so that you can kind of see where I'm, I'm coming from. All right, here goes. Starting in verse one. Abraham went up out of Egypt, he, his wife, all that he had, and Lot with him, into the south. That's a problem. South, we'll talk about that. Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. He went on his journeys from the south, that's the same word, we'll talk about that, even to Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and I. To the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. There Abram called the name of Yahweh. Lot also, who went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. The land was not able to bear them, that they might live together, for their substance was great, so that they could not live together. There was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite lived in the land at the same time. Abraham said to Lot, Please, let there be no strife between me and you, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are relatives. Isn't the whole land before you? Please separate yourself from me. If you go to the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Lot lifted up his eyes, and saw all the plain of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before Yahweh destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of Yahweh, like the land of Egypt, as you go to Zoar. So Lot chose the plain of the Jordan for himself. Lot traveled east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Okay, so again here, it says Lot traveled east. So if I go here, this is a map of the area of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, here is Jerusalem, and this map is situated in a way that puts north where we believe it to be south, east, and west. Okay, so between Bethel and I, that's where they were because that's where Abraham started out. You can see that in the previous chapter. So Abraham went as Yahweh had spoken to him with Lot. He was 75 years old. He took Sarah, his wife, and all this from Haran into Canaan. Abraham passed through the land of the place of Shechem to the oak of Mareh. The Canaanite was then in the land. Yahweh appeared to Abraham. He said, I will give this land. He built an altar and he said he left there to the mountain on the east of Bethel, he pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and I on the east. Okay. So, the thing is, Bethel is right about here, okay? And I is to the south, 
just quote unquote easterly. Okay, so they're not really, they're not situated as we look on a standard map, east and west. They're more situated north and south. And we'll get to that. But, okay, so here is Abraham and Lot in Genesis chapter 13. It says, Lot lifted up his eyes. He saw that the plain was well watered. Okay, so he's looking towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and that's where Lot dwelt. From this area, he dwelt in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. <clears throat> which virtually all archaeologists will agree that it's in this area where the Dead Sea now resides, which was not there at the time, it's believed. So Sodom and Gomorrah and Zoar, the five cities of the plain, were all in this area. Here we go. We've got Ai and Bethel. We've got the cities of the plain. Now it just said in Genesis 13, Lot traveled east. He's here. They're there. Does that look eastward it doesn't to me it looks like it's southward so if you take a mid-eastern map and like i've done here i've rotated this map counterclockwise not quite 90 degrees and we're not completely zoomed in I might have one that's actually a little bit closer. Here we go. This is a map of Israel, and I've, I've done the same thing. This is not quite 90, and all of these are at slightly different um, angles because I just did them by eye. Okay, so here we have Bethel and I. This is where Abraham and Lot were, okay? Here's the cities of the plain. This is where they were, okay? Here and here. In fact, I can probably take this document and it would actually be even more helpful <sighs> because I'm not actually finished with completely with my rotation I'll, I'll try to get them all at about the right angle all right that's better so zooming back in all right, Bethel and I. Now, what's interesting is in chapter 12, it said that Abraham pitched his tent between Bethel and I. It said he had Bethel on the west and I on the east. Now, this looks a little bit more right because if you turn this the standard direction, Bethel is to the north, northwest of I. Here we have them. Well, it's a lot better. Now, that looks like west and that looks like east. And if Lot, like in Genesis 13, travels east to the cities of the plain, he'd be going this way. Now that looks, that looks a little bit more right to me. So if we go back to this Middle Eastern map, we have Israel here, the Mediterranean here. Okay, so as I said, the mountains of Ararat are all in this area here. So if everyone who had landed in the mountains of Ararat traveled eastward and found themselves in the plain of Shinar and built the city of Babylon, they'd be going this way. Now that looks like east to me. So let's just go over a few things. The first place that we see all of what we have translated into English as the cardinal directions, we can see all of them used in Genesis chapter 13 and in one verse in particular. All right, so here in Genesis 13, right after Lot leaves, and it says, Yahweh said to Abraham, after Lot was separated from him, now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward and we're going to talk about those four directions now i can't go to the strongs page on every single one of these but i'm going to give these strongs reference numbers so you can look this up yourself but we're going to start with <clears throat> uh, northward north is the hebrew word tsephon t-s-a-p-h-o-n it's Strong's 6828. It's a feminine noun. The definition in Strong's is northern side, 
dark, gloomy, or tsefan from tsefan, properly hidden, i.e. dark, used only of the north as a quarter, and then in parentheses, gloomy and unknown. So I went and looked at tsefan, T-S-A-P-H-A-N, Strong's 6845, which is a verb, the definition, hoard, reserve, deny, a primitive root to hide by covering over, to hide, keep hidden, or a secret place. All right, now let's talk about south, as is used here. Remember I said I was going to come back to south. South, Negeb, N-E-G-E-B, Strong's 5045. It's a masculine noun. The definition, south country, side, from an unused root meaning to be parched, the south, from its drought, specifically the Negev, or southern district of Judah, occasionally Egypt, as south of Palestine. So it's actually the Negev. The Negev is a large desert area, which would be, as I believe I have a map here, right here we see Negev. Okay, so this is this whole region here. Now that's what they're using in Genesis 13. That's what the translators are using in Genesis 13 for south. Okay, but what it, it originally said was Negev. But they're using it as a cardinal direction. So keep that in mind. Then for east, we have the word Kedem, Q-E-D-E-M, Strong's 6924, a noun masculine adverb noun. It's literally given as those three different word types. Definition, now this is interesting, the definition. Aforetime, ancient time, before, east end, part, side eternal, everlasting, forward, or kidma, Q-E-D-M-A-H, from Kadam, Q-A-D-A-M, Strong's 6923, to come or be in front, meet, which is a verb. And then it says, see, kidma. So, I saw kidma. Kidma, Q-I-D-M-A-H, Strong's 6926. It is a noun feminine. The definition, in front of, the forward part. The, then we get to west. West in Hebrew is yam, Strong's 3220. And it is a noun masculine. Its definition is literally C, a C. And then they added the Mediterranean Sea. But that's not always the case because we see it in Exodus. That they're talking about the Red Sea is Yam Suf. It's sea. So that's what they're applying to west is Yam, the sea. These are translators. Translators are making these calls. So continuing in the definition area of Yam, from an unused root meaning to roar, a sea as breaking in noisy surf. The definition of yam is actually extremely vague and you certainly don't get a cardinal direction out of reading the definition for it. Now, if you're in Strong's, let's say at the Bible Hub, you go to Strong's and you go to Strong's 3220, for yam, and you start scrolling through and looking for similar words to yam, where yam is the root of those words, you're going to find a number of words where yam is the root, um, such as yamin, which would be right, right hand, or south, yamini, on the right hand, yeman, to choose to go right, or Yamani, right or south. So we're, we're starting to get a picture here of maybe directions 
that weren't supposed to be translated as cardinal directions. So when we were talking about Bethel and I, which Abraham camped between with Bethel on the west, I on the east, I showed you how I had to take the map, which was situated in the standard way that we're told north, south, east, and west is. And I had to rotate that map counterclockwise by, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 60 to 70 degrees. And I, I did that also with the Mideastern map so we could have them traveling from the mountains of Ararat eastward and ending up here in Shinar. And when you start doing that with all the maps, these other maps I'm going to show you, I've done that with, a lot of the directions that were given, again, here is Abraham and Lot right here, the cities of the plain are here, when you rotate this appropriately, you get an eastward direction. Now this is my Negev map. Again, in Genesis 13, when the translators say southward, they use the word Negev, and that seems like it might be a little bit irresponsible. The reason why it would probably be, probably be a little irresponsible is, going back to Genesis 13 and verse 1, it says, Abraham went up out of Egypt. He, his wife, all that he had, and Lot with him, into the south. Well, okay. <clears throat> so it says he went up out of Egypt into the south. If you look at this on a standard map, you know, that's that's situated as we would know it. So here's Egypt. Egypt's right here. And they would have been staying around the Delta area. So it says he went up out of Egypt into the south. So we're thinking what, that went up out of Egypt into the south. And then all of a sudden we have him back up where he originally camped between I and Bethel. And you're wondering, what's going on? That doesn't make a lot of sense. But if we go back to a map that is rotated like this, and we understand that the south being used there is not south, the cardinal direction, but it is the Negev area. So he went up, and you'll follow my, my cursor here, he went up out of Egypt into the south, they say, which is just the Negev. He went up into the Negev. Again, the directions aren't right. And when you see south, you better check and see what word it is. Because it's if it's Negev, then that isn't an absolute. Okay, that was only relative to where Abraham was at the time. And we don't know that it meant the cardinal direction south from where he was when Yahweh was telling him to look at all the lands around him. Okay. So we're going to go into a couple of other key verses to help us understand directions and, and the problems with directions. We've got Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 6. It says, The wind goes towards the south and turns around to the north. It turns around continually as it goes, and the wind returns again to its courses. All right, well... And here, if you check the word south, you're not going to get Negev. You're going to get a word that is Darom, D-A-R-O-M, and it's Strong's 1864. Totally, completely different word. It's not even related to the south that we were seeing in Genesis 13. And, and here it says the definition is just south. So we would think south as an opposite of north. So once more, the wind goes towards the south and turns around to the north. It turns around continually as it goes, and the wind returns again to its courses. So I've got a little map here I found of wind patterns in the Middle East. Now, as you'll watch my cursor, we're going around the north coast of Africa. Okay, we've got Libya, Egypt, and then up here we would have Israel, 
<clears throat> excuse me, in Lebanon, up into Turkey. Okay, and then we would have Greece up here into Italy. All right, and then the normal way we've been taught directions, north, south, east, west. But Ecclesiastes 1 says that the wind, it goes to the south and it returns to the north. We see wind patterns here coming down and sweeping in what we would call a westerly fashion, then sweeping up in what we would call a northeasterly fashion and continuing out what we would call easterly. So that's not really going along with the text until we rotate this, try to rotate it somewhere in the 60 to 70 degree area like I've been doing with the rest of the maps. And then we've got, and the wind travel, travels southward and then goes back northward and continues in its circuit. So that's really interesting. Another Bible verse I'd like to bring up real quick is in Job 26, 7. It says, he stretches out the north over the empty space and he hangs the earth on nothing. Now, a lot of people would know this because some globe earthers try to use this as uh, the earth being a ball spinning in space and the emptiness of space. Rob Skiba has used this to show that uh, actually what's being said here is just that he doesn't hang the earth on anything. Not that he hangs the earth on nothing, but that he doesn't hang the earth on anything. But if we pay attention to the first part of this, he stretches out the north over empty space. I'm going to go to the interlinear real quick. Okay, in north, we have the same word for north that came from Genesis 13, and that was uh, Tsiphon, and <clears throat> meaning uh, like a hidden place, okay, northern, dark, gloomy. And then empty space here is Strong's 8414, and a lot of people who have gotten into a lot of Bible studies, specifically Genesis and the creation account, would know this word tohu. Uh, a lot of people point out how the earth was uh, formless, tohu favohu, without form and void. We get the same thing here, tohu, formless, confusion, unreality, emptiness. So keeping that in mind, then we go back and we look at this again. He stretches out <laughs> the north, meaning the hidden place, over this formless empty space or area now what that means exactly i don't know i'm just pointing these things out um trying to point out that what we've come to understand about directions is not right this if we're thinking of north this way south this way east this way west this way isn't right but if we flip everything like i said counterclockwise probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 70 degrees then we're getting a lot closer to it now we do that same thing with the sinusoidal which is what Lori frary and lawrence wright have been looking at and working on and it seems like a few more people are perusing this idea as well we'll get something that is a little bit more like this concerning what is in what directions. Now, I'm not saying this is absolutely the right way to look at directions, but it's something to think about that what we're thinking of as having to be north or, or south or east or west, I don't think is right. And this kind of goes along a little bit with the, the video I just made about historicism and the problems there are with time and the way that we see time as it's been translated into English for us. There's a real big problem there. Um, and, and a lot is getting lost in the translation. So my hopes is with this video that uh, other people that are interested in the map, that are interested in coming up with a more accurate map 
for the flat earth and trying to figure out how these things all might work in this model might take some of this information and go a little bit further than I have with it and and start coming up with with something so this is my offering I hope it was helpful until next time God bless you guys